Hey everyone, welcome or welcome back to How to Train Your Gavin. This is my second negative COVID test since coming back from Yalk because I was worried I wouldn't be able to do this vlog because I want to go and use my public library for the first time in quite some time. But if I got COVID from Yalk, which I went to recently, then I wouldn't, you know, risk it and go out and, you know, further spread the disease. So fortunately, I'm fine. However, I do feel bunged up. I do have a sore throat. So it must be a cold if I got two negative COVID tests. Must be a cold. I'll still take my face mask just in case. But if you want to see how Yalk went, I do have a vlog. I'll link it down below. But yeah, the purpose of this vlog is that I am going to be partaking in Summerween. And I'm so gutted because I did get the Summerween merch from Bond bonfire but then it somehow got sent back to bonfire and I got an email saying oh it was undelivered shall we send it out again and I said yes of course but like I never got a sorry you were out card or anything or any kind of notice to say that it was attempted a delivery yeah now it's like hasn't arrived and it's summerween and I'm gutted because I wanted to wear it and represent summerween I do have my spring fling a ween shirt on even though it's far too hot to wear it but yeah I'm sad because I got the merch I got everything and it's not here. I don't blame Bonfire. I blame whoever tried to bloody post it. Didn't leave a card. But anyway, this vlog is dedicated to Summerween, which is running from the 15th to the 21st, I believe. Let me just double check. I don't know why I didn't check first. I always do this. Why do I start a video and like never get all of the facts, all of the information ready? Ugh. Yeah, July 15th to 21st. And there are four reading prompts and one general prompt. So if you do not know what Summerween is, it is a readathon dedicated to reading like spooky books to get really excited for Halloween. It's hosted by Gabby from Gabby Reads and Liv from Olivia Reads Alati and it is so fun. I took part in my first one last year and during this time, it was July, but I was moving house, like into this house, the week of Summerween. So I couldn't really partake too much. So this year, I'm gonna get through into it. I wanna represent. So the prompts are read a book in the dark slash at night, read a book with Halloween colors on the cover, read a book with haunt in the title, read a slasher, and then the final prompt is a make or bake spooky fall dreamed thief. Make or bake a spooky fall themed treat. So I'm gonna ignore pretty much all of these prompts <laughs> because I want to try and read Booktube's most hated thrillers to see if I'm gonna like them. I am still pretty new to the thriller game, so I feel like I might end up liking at least one of these because I don't know, I feel like maybe a lot of the criticisms for the thrillers I might be reading in this vlog are because, you know, these are from seasoned thriller readers and they know what's good in the genre, whereas I don't know shit. So in terms of the prompts, I feel like I will be able to maybe do the first two, but then prompts three and four, just gonna pretend don't exist. And I'm not gonna say what these books are. I mean, you'll most likely see in the thumbnail and everything, but I'm gonna try and see if my local library has them in. So as I mentioned, I will be using my local library for the first time in years or not. <laughs> I used to work as a bookseller, so I got 50% off books, so I never went to my library in order to, like, get books, but you know what? Now's the time. Now is the time to go back to my library, which I can't remember where I went, but apparently I have a card for. I randomly found that in my wallet during a Patreon live show, and I was surprised. I was gobsmacked. I genuinely hope I don't have any books on there that I owe the library. Oh my god, could you imagine? I scan my card, and it says, you have a book 10 years overdue. You have a £1,000 fine. Could you imagine? God, now I'm a bit scared to go into my library. But it is a library I used to go to as a kid and I do have fond memories from being a kid there. So it's gonna be interesting going back and I genuinely can't remember going back and getting that card. I genuinely can't remember. I feel like I might have applied for it online and never used it, maybe? I don't know. And this is weird as well. One of the reasons why I didn't go back to my library, and you're gonna think it's weird, is I didn't want to ruin my memories as a child being there. I, again, I don't know why I thought that or why I think I would ruin my memories as a kid by going again as an adult. But you know, it's just, it's the way my mind works. I have checked online and apparently they do have the books that I wanna read in this vlog. And I also own one of them too. So it's gonna be good, it's gonna be fine. And I have every faith that they're still gonna be there. So I'm gonna take you guys with me to my local library and it'll be my first time since I was a kid. I'm so excited, but I will take my face mask just in case. Even though I've had two negative COVID tests, I still do wanna spread any of my cold, which I think I do have. I'm also really hungry, so I might nip into the cafe there. I think they've got a cafe. My bus does usually pass the library, and I think there's a cafe. So that'll be really fun, and hopefully my boys, my babies, 
will be okay for maybe an hour or two while I go there. You'll be okay, won't you? While I just nip out for a little bit, won't you? I've had to tell my babies off because they're pissed in one of the toys. What have I tell you about pissing in places you're not supposed to? They ignore me so much. I would ignore me too. Anyway, let's go to the library. Got the goods. It's only a five minute walk there, but my lord am I knackered. That library is amazing. Honestly, I love it. It was so peaceful, so quiet. It had such a good range. And I sat in the cafe for a little bit as well. I had a couple of coffees. And I also started the first book that I wanted to read in this vlog. And it was just such a nice experience, honestly. So I did manage to get all three of the ones that I needed. That it did say on the website that it had them in stock. So I knew that it would be there. But I was just, I don't know, there's always a part of me that's just like, don't believe everything you read on the internet. Okay, before I show you all of the books, which you would have already seen in the very raw footage, I did put on my Instagram stories a couple of weeks ago asking for some of booktube's most hated thrillers so i got like a lot of feedback from that got a lot of comments and suggestions of what to read for it and i also want to give a huge thank you to gabby from gabby reads for helping me narrow it down so i do have three that i got from the library and then i have one that i own so actually i'll show you the one that i already own and that's the maidens by alex michaelides michaelides this is from the author of the silent patient and i believe this is set in cambridge university and it follows a group of people in a society called the maidens one of the maidens is murdered and a mystery happens, mystery ensues. Obviously, I've just binge watched all of Only Murders in the Building season one in a day for the first time. I was obsessed. I really want to watch season two right now, which might end up happening, to be honest, not gonna lie. But like reading what these mystery books are about is just making me want to watch Only Murders in the Building. Any fans of Only Murders in the Building watching, let me know in the comments. So the three books I got for the library were 
Nine Lives by Peter Swanson, Survive the Night by Riley Sager, and One by One by Ruth Ware. And I actually started reading this in the cafe at the library. I'm 33 pages into it. So I'll tell you what these are about. This one just follows a group of people at a ski resort and they get cut off from the rest of the world. And I think four of them end up dead. At least that's what it said at the very start. Four of them end up dead. And who did it? We may never know. Survive the Night, Riley Sager. This is the one that I think is the most hated on booktube. I kind of knew this one would be in this vlog without me even having to ask. I think this is like a road trip kind of story because it says that Charlie Jordan has been driven across the country by a serial killer. Maybe. Seems there was a killer who tied up and stabbed three students in the span of a year. And maybe the person who was driving Charlie is the killer. They share stories. Charlie begins to suspect the driver being the killer. That's the mystery. And then finally, we have Nine Lives by Peter Swanson. So nine different people get a letter each and then they start to die one by one. Are these like Agatha Christie and then there were non-retellings? I believe this one is, but I'm not 100% sure about one by one actually. Either way, I hope I end up enjoying all of these. We'll see. We'll see if I actually read all four of them as well. <laughs> so that's what I'm reading. That's what I think the books are about. Let's dive into the Summerween reading vlog. And let's see if I end up liking some of Booktube's most hated thrillers. Guys, I've still got cold. Oh, you little booty baba. You little booty baba. I'm sick. <coughs> Boo, you whore. Anyway, enough of that. I've been reading one by one all day. I am 187 pages in and I mean, it's all right. It's fine. I'm a little bit bored. I like the idea of being in this like ski resort and being cut off from the rest of the world. That sounds very isolating. It sounds very isolating. It doesn't come across as isolating. I mean, yes, they don't have any help coming, but I, I don't know. I think I'm not really gelling with the writing style because it, it is first person, a split narrative between Liz and Erin. I'm not getting the sense of isolation from the narration. I'm really not. It doesn't feel scary. A couple of people have died. It took ages for the first person to die as well. And by that point, I was like, is something going to happen? But yeah, it just took so long to get into it. I will give it props. It's becoming a bit of a faster read now. The chapters are quite short and I seem to be getting through it quite quickly. I'll definitely finish this tomorrow. Yeah, because yeah, I've, I've done pretty well. But I'm also just loving the feeling that I'm reading a library book. I, I just feel great. Great. I just, I, I go through it. I'm just like, I'll read a library book. So as you can tell, I'm still like super proud that I went to the library. Yeah, I'm starting to see the kind of parallels with And Then There Were None by Agatha Christie. To be fair, in And Then There Were None, I didn't really care about any of the characters. And I don't really care about the characters in this one. So in that way, it's a pretty good kind of retelling. But it's definitely way less interesting. With And Then There Were None, I was excited to find out who would get it next and how they would get it. But because there's only been like two deaths so far and we're halfway through, and I had no kind of inkling of emotion towards either of them, I'm just like, okay, let them die, let them all die. Just set the entire place alight and let it explode. I'm not really that interested in finding out who's doing it, 
because I'm just like, also, I, I'm getting annoyed. I'm getting annoyed because at the start of every single chapter, there's the whole Snoop ID listening to Snoop scribers because, okay, Snoop is an app that allows you to listen to songs at the same time as somebody else. So it feels like you're listening to the same song at the same time. So it almost feels like you're together. Spotify does that. Spotify does that. I see who's listening to what in my friends list on Spotify. I can see what people are listening to at that moment, that very moment. So does Spotify not exist in this? Like it's not an amazing idea. It's not. And the people who are meeting at this lodge, this cabin thing, are people who have like shares or people who are associated with a company that created I forgot what it's called already. Snoop? Snoopy? Snooper? I think it's just called Snoop. Where I can snoop on people. But like every single chapter starts with, and it's between them two characters, remember, Liz and Erin. So it's the same character. So it's the exact same Snoop profile. And it's the exact same copy and paste of thing because the Snoop ID is always the same. They're never listening to anything. So that's blank. And then the number of subscribers has been just the same. Although actually there was one moment where they, they got a subscriber and they were like, oh, how did that happen? Because I got a notification, but there's supposed to be no wi-fi up there so that's interesting Ooh, well i wasn't interested yeah because she started with zero subscribers and now she has one and so i'm not finding that interesting in the slightest it's fine it's honestly fine it's just fine blurbs on the back by different authors louise candlish said the sense of dread deepens as the snow falls and ruth wears tensely plotted and deliciously cast alpine Al alpine sense of dread i ain't dread nothing tense I intense. Plotted, I am plotted. Deliciously cast. Any of these characters could die and I couldn't care less. Erin Kelly said, a real spine chiller. That confirms Ruth Ware as the true heir to Agatha Christie's crown. Then we're in trouble, lads. Lisa Jules said, what a read. So fast paced, action packed, twisty turny, modern, clever, scary and ingenious. Fast paced, no. Action packed, no. Twisty turny, no. Modern, well, yeah, it's modern because it's set in the modern day. Clever, no. Scary, no. Ingenious, no. Geetha Lodge said, impossible to put down, perfectly plotted. I've just put it down. And finally, Shari Lapina said, a chilling edge of your seat thriller. I'm not reading a single thing any of these authors have written. I've not read a single thing by them. And I never will now. You liars. So yeah, I'm gonna continue this. Great first day of Samoan. I feel like I've really done a lot of progress. And if I keep this up, if I read half a book a day, wait, hang on. If I read half a book a day, that means it'll take eight days to finish four books. And Samoan's only running for seven days, I believe. So that's not, that's not right. I need to pick up the pace. Damn it. It's the first day of the readathon and I already feel behind. I thought I was doing well, but then the math wasn't mathing. Now I'm scared for my life. If Liv and Gabby don't kill me off with this readathon, Ruth Ware's gonna do the job. Didn't even have the mic on. Okay, it's fine, let's start again. But look, it's a Summerween miracle. My shirt arrived. I did a whole twirling thing. I did a whole montage of me like twirling, but my mic wasn't on. So right, let's start again. I, I, why? I know better than this to not turn the mic on. I've done it countless times where I've accidentally not turned it on and I've really kicked myself for it. I should know better. I should. It's my own fault. So one by one, I finished it. I finished it. It is day two of Summerween and this was fine. This was fine. I didn't hate it. I didn't feel really any strong emotion towards it. I think, uh, so I did kind of guess who it was and I think it was made a little bit obvious because like for some reason, for some reason or another, Ruth Ware didn't like try and give you any kind of breadcrumbs leading you away from different suspects. Like there was no kind of like investigation between the characters essentially. I mean, the characters are discussing what's happened and stuff, but there's no really like kind of effort to really like follow the clues. Like who is this? And you know, because it was too obvious I think from the beginning. So another character catches on and yeah, I'll, I'll not say anything more than that. So it didn't feel like a true mystery because there wasn't really like any clues there. So I wasn't really taken by surprise with that. But I think I was going to give this a 2.5 stars at that point. But then we get the reveal and then we get a climax and then we get like 50 pages after that where there's like nothing really that we need to know. So 
I was, yeah, tempted to give it 2.5. I'm going to give this one a two star because even though, even though I haven't given it that many positive thoughts on it, it was a very quick read. I wouldn't have said it was fast paced because it was just a whole lot of nothing really. I genuinely didn't think there was that much of a good plot, essentially. Like, people died. Nobody made the effort to try and solve it, apart from like one person. And there was like no really clues given to us from Ruth Ware herself to make this a more engaging mystery for the reader. It was just, it happened. Then we just got reveals, essentially. Yeah, that I, I would say that was a accurate. So I didn't feel like I could play along trying to figure out who it is because I thought it was pretty obvious quite early on who it was and there was no effort on Ruth Ware's part to distract you from maybe your initial suspect. I mean if you read this you might clock on quite early on. I, just, I don't know I just I felt like this was probably written in one night which is probably why it's called one by one. She did one draft in one night. That's what this means one by one. One draft by one night. Even as a mystery I thought it was a letter because again I don't think as a reader you could follow along and work out the clues and do all of that because there was nothing really given to you. In terms of a thriller as well well, I've had more thrills from my right hand. I couldn't have even said that the big reveal in things was very thrilling because it just happened. And then the climax, it just happened. I didn't feel any tension. I didn't, and I tried. And I was so excited because it's my first library book since I was a kid. So I was really into it, but I just found the characters very bland. I wasn't really the biggest fan of the main characters, uh, the, the POV characters, Liz and Erin. And I just didn't root for any characters either. I, I didn't feel like any of them really had a good personality. And there was character dialogue that was the poor attempt of Ruth where trying to make the characters seem a little bit more down to earth. Like, this is a really stupid example because it, I literally just read it, it happens towards the end. But when somebody mentions somebody else's name and they say, that's my name, don't wear it out. Like, it's kind of, it's filled with things like that where it's, you know, stock lines essentially, stock dialogue that you could probably get for free online. You know how you can use like copyright free music? I felt like copyright free dialogue. And it's weird as well because I haven't read a whole lot of thrillers, so I thought I would probably like this more than I did. I mean, Ruth, where I've got one thing to say to you. Yeah, basic. Yeah, the ideas was there. Why am I giving it two stars if I'm this negative? I don't feel like it really deserves a one star because one star is like among like so they hate. Like I didn't hate it, so that's why it's two stars. <laughs> I didn't hate it. I finished it. The ideas were good. Execution poor. Yeah, I'm just gonna say this is two stars. So that's my first book read for this series. I'm gonna do daily vlogs or like bi daily vlogs for some Halloween. So I hope you will join me on this adventure, especially to find out if the next three books I'm reading for this vlog, Nine Lives, Survive the Night and The Maidens will be better or worse than One by One. So while I agree that a lot of people don't like this one, I mean a lot of people do. Like, I have seen there are a lot of people who do actually like this one, including a lot of my friends, but because it was recommended a lot in my Instagram story, that's why it's on here. And I would agree with a lot of people who didn't like it. So what about these ones? Will I end up disliking them, liking them? How will they score on the leaderboard? You're gonna have to tune in to the next vlog to find out. <laughs> I am going to do an Instagram story right now. I don't know if it'll still be live when this vlog goes up. Hopefully it will be. But I will be doing an Instagram story to say which book I should do next. So don't forget to follow me on Instagram. It's at GavGav7. I will link it down in the description box. And you can help choose my next read in the Summer Ween vlogs. I'll also do it with the one after that too. So I'm excited to see if I'll read The Maidens, Survive the Night or Nine Lives next. So that is the first, well, kind of two days of Summer Ween done. I'm also feeling a little bit better. I feel like that's the power of summer ween. I am slowly healing and you know my cold is slowly going away and with the arrival of my shirt as well I'm just so happy. I'm so happy. My pink Lit Reader Boot Club shirt also came today. I'm gonna look so good in that. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Don't forget to give this video a like if you enjoyed and subscribe if you haven't already. Leave all the comments down below. I would love to chat to you about anything and everything. A huge thank you to my patrons for supporting my content and helping make these videos possible. If you'd like to try my Patreon, I do have a link in the description box as well as all of my social media links if you want to follow me on any of those. And hopefully I will see you in episode two. Bye.